help in our situation for you. I love for you and the doctor suggestions. Those who can live with me, those who can live me, those who can know me, those who can know me, and in the manifest world, you guys will take upon me and just call upon us. Let it be according to your mercy, Lord, not according to our sins. Our Father, who art the Lord. I will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it's on temptation to deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, have the Lord, have the Lord, have the Lord, have the Lord. Glory and honor, honor and glory to the old Holy Trinity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Peace and edification to the one only holy, Catholic and Apostolic, Orthodox Church of God. Amen. Remember, O Lord, those who have brought you these gifts, those on whose behalf they have been brought, and those by whom they have been brought, give them all. Pray for these holy and precious gifts, our sacrifices, and those who have brought them, Lord, have mercy. See 
of our Roman Father, Archpriest, our Lord of others, and from my own mouth, being the least, for the best and for the glory is the name, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, and the age of ages. Amen.
Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, through whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Among whom you also are, are the call of Jesus Christ to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request that by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you, by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also. Just as among the other Gentiles, I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God's salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jews, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith, the grace of God the Father with you all the time. The Catholic Epistle from the Epistle of our teacher St. James is blessed to be upon us all, and my beloved. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberty and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation. Because as a flower of the field he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat, that it, that it withers the grass. If its flowers falls and its beautiful appearance perishes, so the rich man will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own he will be brought... He, will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we may that we might be a kind of first fruits of his, crea of his creation. Do not love the world or the things of the world which uh, which fast and all those desires, who does the will of God shall by forever men.
the former account I made of Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. No, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went into the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of the Lord shall grow, multiply, be mighty, and be confirmed in the Holy Church of God. Amen. This may have been known for us for many years and peaceful times, while our sins and angels are forgiven through the tender mercies of our merciful Lord. On this day of the year 970 AD, the Saint of Abraham, the 62nd of Pope of Alexander, recorded his father was a descendant of the Christians of the East, whose name was Ibn Zara the Syrian. He was a rich merchant who visited Egypt often, then finally settled there. He was blessed with many virtues, including mercy to the needy. His reputation of righteousness and knowledge became well known. When the patriarch chair became vacant, the bishops and the learned elders all agreed to choose him as patriarch. When he sat on the chair of the seat of St. Mark, he gave all his positions to the poor and needy. أطفال في كنيسة لو سمحت تخلوهم يتراعوا في البرايلوم. وما كانش في البرايلوم في مكانهم في كنيسة ماري جيرجس وجهزها تلاقيه يتراعوا في كنيسة ماري جيرجس. During his days, Cosmel ibn Mina, the Coptic minister, was appointed a governor over Palestine. Before his departure to his new position, he entrusted 100,000 dinars, dinars to the father, the patriarch, asking him to hold them until his return. He asked the Pope to give the money to the poor, the needy, the churches, and the monasteries if he died there. When the news of the, of the taking over of Syria and Palestine by Haftim, uh, reached the patriarch, he thought that Cosman had died. He distributed the money according to Cosman's instructions. But Cosman was saved from death and returned to Egypt. The father, the patriarch, told him what he did with the money, and Cosman was glad and exceedingly happy. Among his accomplishments was the abolition of some corrupt and Erroneous customs. He prevented and exterminated everyone who took bribes from every, from anyone for the purpose of gaining a cler clerical position. He also strongly forbade the, the keeping of concubines when the people who were practicing that knew his orders. The fear of God moved them, but they also feared that the patriarch might exterminate them. They set all the 
events free and went to the Bija repenting, repenting, except for one of rich men, one of the rich men of the country. This man did not fear God, nor did he heed the fact that this, this father who chided him repeatedly and was very patient with him would exterminate him. He did not return from his evil way and was not afraid that lest God should destroy him. In spite of that, this father did not slacken and teach him and rebuke him. Furthermore, he humbled himself like Christ his teacher and he went to the, that man's house. When the man heard of the arrival of the patriarch in his house, he shut the door and refused to let him in. The father remained standing at the door for two hours, knocking, but the man neither opened the door for him, nor did he speak to him. The father realized that this rich man had intentionally separated himself from the flock of Christ and became a corrupt member. The Pope saw it fit to cut him from the body of the church, so as not to corrupt the rest of the other body. He excommunicated him, saying, Let his blood be on his own head. And then the Pope shook off the dust from his sandals at the door of the house of that man. At this moment, God manifested a sign before the eyes of those who were present, for the door step, which was made of granite, had split in two. Later on, the Lord showed his might, and the man lost all his wealth, and he was fired from his position in disgrace. He became ill, which led to his death in a horrible way. He became an example to the others, since many sinners learned the lesson and were afraid as a result of what had happened to him. During the days of his father, and Mu'az the Khalifa had a Jewish advisor, his name was Jacob ibn Yusuf who adopted the Muslim faith. That minister had a Jewish friend, Ibn Kibis, who used it to go with him frequently to the Khalifa and converse with him. That Jew took advantage of the favor that his friend had with the Khalifa and found this to be an opportunity to ask for the presence of the father, the patriarch, in order that he might have a debate with him. Um, Abba Ibrahim came along with Amba Sawirus ibn Muqafa, Bishop of Ashmunin, and Mu'az ordered them to sit, so they sat down silently. He asked, why are you not debating? Amba Sawirus answered, how can we argue in the presence of Al-Khalifa with a man who is less intelligent than an ox? And Mu'az asked for an explanation. Amba Sawirus said, God has declared by the mouth of the Prophet, that the ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's spirit, but Israel does not know. Isaiah, first chapter, verse 3. They debated the, the, that Jew and shamed him with all the unrefutable arguments that gave the, sound, the soundness of the Christian faith. Then they left Amaz with great honor. The minister and his Jewish friend were not able to bear the insults, so they sought the, the chance to take revenge of on Christians. A few days later, the Jewish advisor, Jacob and Yusuf, went to al Muaz and maliciously told him, Your Royal Highness knows that the faith of the Christians does not have a sound base. The Bible states, If you have a faith as, as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Matthew 17, 20. Friends of the, faith, of the faithful knows the falsehood of, those, of these sayings. And to verify this, we will summon the patriarch to give us the proof that the Christ's sayings are true. Christ's sayings are true. The Khalifa thought to himself, if he and the saying of Christ is true, that would be of great benefit to us, for the Mukatta Mount is too close to Cairo. If the mountain can be moved away, that would make the position of the city greater than what it is now. 
If the same is not true, that will give us the justification to persecute the Christians. The Mu'az called the father, the patriarch, and placed this saying before him, and asked for the proof of its soundness. The Pope asked for three days respite, which was granted. When the Pope left the Khalifa, he gathered the monks and the bishops nearby, and they all, and they all stayed in the Mu'alla'a, the suspended church in Old Cairo, three days fasting and supplicating God. Before dawn of the third day, as Abba Abraham draws off out of sheer weariness, our Holy Lady, the Virgin Saint Mary, the Mother of God, appeared to him and told him to rise up and go to the street which leads to the market. There he would find a one-eyed man bearing a pot of water on his shoulder. She instructed Abba Abraham to tell him that he was the man designated by God to perform this sign. This holy man's name was Simon, and he was a tanner. The father of the patriarch took him along with some of the priests, monks, and people to see the Al-Mu'az, who was out of the governor, government leaders and the nobles, who was out with the government leaders and the nobles of the city nearby the Mokattam mountain. The father of the patriarch stood with those who were with him on one side and the Mu'az and his Anturik stood on the other side. The father of the patriarch and the believers prayed and knelt down three times and every time they knelt they said, Kiriya Laison, Lord have mercy. Whenever the patriarch and the congregation lifted up their heads after each bow, the mountain would lift up and when they bowed down, the mountain was lowered down to the ground and whenever they walked, the mountain moved before them. A, greater, a great fear came on the Khalifa and his companions, and many fell on the ground. The Khalifa advanced on his horse toward the patriarch and said, O great teacher, I, know, I now know that you are a holy man. Ask whosoever you wish, and I will give, give it to you. The patriarch refused to ask for anything. But when the Khalifa insisted, he asked the governor to uh, allow him to build churches, especially the church of St. Mercurius, which was in old Cairo. He wrote him a decree permitting the building and the renovation of churches, and he gave him a large sum of money from the treasury. The patriarch thanked him and prayed for him, but he refused to take the money. As a result, the master revered and respected him more for his pity and righteousness. When they started building the church of St. Marcorius, some evil men prevented them from working, whereupon the Mu'az came to the site and kept the, the troublemakers away. He remained there standing until they completed laying the foundation. His father renovated many churches all over the Sea of St. Mark. When he completed his course, he departed in peace. After he sat on the, on the throne of St. Mark for three years and six days, his prayers be with us. Amen. On this day also, we commemorate St. Anatolius, the priest and martyr. His prayers be with us and glory be to our God forever. Amen. <laughs>
Christ the Lord. God was it to Saint John the disciples and holy apostles. Many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things that you hear and not see them, and to hear the things that you hear and have not heard them. The blessed are your eyes, worthy to hear, your ears, worthy to hear, and we be worthy to hear attack according to holy gospels through the prayers of your saints. Which we offer up unto you, O Lord our God. Those who are for us, if we pose them, those who are secure them, for you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and that is our nation of us all. <laughs> Jesus, be Christus, e 
بتشيري ام فنودي اتقنخ بيقول افصائني ان از ماتش از ميني هاف تيكن ان هاند تو سيت ان اوردر اناراتيف اوف ذوز ثينجز ويتش ار موست شورلي بيليفد امانج اس جاست از ذوز هو فروم ذا بيجينينج وير اي ويتنسز اند مينسترز تو ذا وير ديليفرد ذيم تو اس It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account most extract of feelings that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea, A certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. And they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn the incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside. At the hour of incense, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. And you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel. To the Lord their God, He will also go before Him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place. Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time, and the people waited for Zacharias and marvelled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned to them and remained speechless. And so it was as soon as the days of his service were completed that he departed to his own house. Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, "Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when He looked on me to take away my reproach among men."
is the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Spirit on the earth me. The Gospel of today is the Gospel of mercy, love, compassion, and forgiveness. Today we heard the Annunciation of Archangel Gabriel to Zechariah the priest about the birth of John the Baptist. The, this incident of the story has four characters as we all heard and those characters each one of them has, been, has a meaning. We know Zechariah the priest his name means God remembers God remembers and John his name means God has compassion. God remembered his promise to the people, to our father Adam, about salvation. And he came to fulfill his promise. And God has moved with compassion toward his creation which his hands has made. Gabriel also, his name has meaning, which is God forgives. God forgives. And God always forgives the sins of his people. As St. Paul said, as while we are still sinners, God loved us. So God, he remembered his promise, and out of his love and compassion, he was moved. And he came to forgive the sins of his people and redeem their sins. And Elizabeth also, her name has a meaning of God provides and fulfills the needs of his people. So, as I said, this gospel is the gospel of mercy, compassion, love and forgiveness. Um, we learn some lessons from this gospel. First of all, everything under heaven has time. And as we heard in the psalm of today, David the prophet by the Holy Spirit says, he's saying to God, you will arise and have mercy upon Zion, for it is time to have mercy upon her. God do not delay and never delays, but God always have a set time. In the fullness of time, He came to redeem us. So whenever you have a request to God, just submit yourself to Him and tell Him, as we learn, let it be your will and not our will. Let it be according to the will, O God. You have a time a set time and you will intervene and you will fulfill and you will come and uh, uh, fulfill your promises. Also, another, another, another lesson that we can learn from this, that the Gospel mentioned about Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, both were righteous in front of God and they the reason of the righteousness, they were walking in all the commandments of God, blameless. Being righteous is something we all are invited to be righteous people. Is it easy to attain? It needs work, of course, but you can attain righteousness if you walk in all the commandments of God, blameless, as Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. Also, this the, being a righteous person that does not mean you do not sin. But you strive against sin, you try to reach perfection, as the Lord has said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, and be holy as your Father in heaven is holy. So you try to attain perfection and also try to attain righteousness. 
without being righteous, without fulfilling all the commandments of God, we were not going to have place for him in heaven. You might say it is hard. I live in a wicked generation. I live where I have people around me who are not godly. Compare yourself to Zana, for example. Sorry, Noah. He was the only righteous person in his generation. And God has chosen him because he found him righteous. And he saved him and his wife and his three children and those three, three wives. Those three wives. So actually, you can be righteous in a, in a, a, mind, a, a wicked generation. Joseph the righteous in the Old Testament, he was the only one in the land of Egypt who worshipped God. And he did not deviate, and he did not uh, slack from his, the God, his God's commandment. And he, for, he did not never forget that he is in, in standing in front of God. And he said, how can I do this great sin and sin against God? So, being remember, remembered always that you are the child of God. You are in the presence of God. God has paid His blood for your life and for your sake. And you will try to work righteousness all the time. And when you sin, you will quickly go and repent and try to strive against the, the sinful world. Also Lot, he was living among the, the all-time sinful people, Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible mentioned that he was suffering living among them. So still he was able to be righteous and God came and sent his angels to take him out of the midst of out of the fire before he turned, turned over the city. So being righteous and walking in the commandments of God is the way to heaven. Is all what you're doing, is, this is all your duties on earth. Because this is your number one goal is to go to heaven. And being righteous, you're going to be able to be a good example to the people around you at work, at home, your children, your spouse, you're going to be a good example, living righteous life, fulfilling all the commandments of God. Here, give us also Zechariah and Elizabeth, both man and woman, both of whom are, can live righteous and be saintly in front of God. There's no uh, uh, differentiation or no, uh, between the two. They are both equal in front of God, both precious in front of God, and both can attain the uh, saintly life and righteous life. Also, last thing here, although they were righteous, although they were following the commandment of God, but they suffered of one thing, they did not have a child. And that was a shame in the Old Testament. It's not anymore in the New Testament because the children could be spiritual children. But in the, in the Old Testament was a sign of rejection as if, because every woman was hoping that God would incarnate from her seeds. So it was a sign of rejection and shame among the uh, the, the families and the people of the, of the city. So, although they were righteous, they had to go through an affliction and suffering. And we can see, because some people think sometimes when we go through pain and suffering and temptations and uh, uh, afflictions, that this is because of our own sins. This is not correct, and actually the Lord Jesus Christ corrected that in the story of the, the born blind person. So, do not think about this this way. God had assigned a day for recompense, and He would come and judge each one according to His deeds. So, when you go through temptations and sufferings and afflictions, that does not mean that you are a sinful person, 
and that's why you, you're suffering. Those people were righteous and walking in all the commandments of God, and also they suffered. But see, the, the good, the positive part of it here, those people, Zechariah and Elizabeth, lived all their lives praying to God. And the affliction or the, 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 the need or the, the suffering caused them to get closer to God. So sometimes we see people deviate from God and say, where is God? What happened to God? Why God allowed all this to happen? God is there, He's listening, He's watching, and He has a set time. He will come to save His people. He will come and fulfill the needs of His people. He will come and forgive the sins of, of His people. He will move His compassion as uh, he, he came and saved us all. So we have hope and we have faith that God is there for us. He is listening to our needs and He will have a time when He will come and He will comfort us and He will wipe away all the tears out of our own eyes and He always waiting for us, opening His arms and He is welcoming us. He wants us to be with Him and to be with Him forever. He said, I go and prepare a place for you and then I will come and take you with me. Glory be to our Lord forever. Amen. <laughs> Brothers, Matthew, 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 Matthew,
Evangelho do Fórum e em sentir e todos ver Cristo os Brachóis. Agora o Evangelho do Fórum e em sentir e todos ver Cristo os Brachóis. Agora o Evangelho do Fórum e em sentir e todos ver Cristo os Brachóis. Nem o dar mais o ar para não ter um outro esses mara o dinheiro estão de fiote e para tu criador. Para o dinheiro do fundo me incendiri e sou de Cristo os brancos. Para o dinheiro do dar mais o ar é para Cristo. Salmo de Salmo se divide o todo se chega o grande amir. Kde vám je vůdce kněžiře, protože mě to uvádí na tři nohy. Ani jsi smára udíje, protože vůd by byl to krátor. Smára udíje, protože mě se čiří Jezus běhlis do zbrachoří. Smára udíje, protože mě to uvádí na barakli.